Hi, I'm Joel Morrow, um, Head of Research and Development with Ploger Transportation, and we're going to take you a walk around on our Mac Anthem Adaptive Loading 6x2. So we're going to start at the front and just kind of go over all the major specs and why we've done what we've done in the truck. We'll start with the engine. It's the MP8HE, which is the turbo compounded high efficiency version of the engine. Um, it uh, is rated at 445 horsepower, 1,850 pound-feet of torque at 900 RPM. Um, in addition to this, in the front, we put a 14.6 capacity front axle um, with the sway bar option. And the sway bar, which is right down here, helps to improve stability when we're running axle up. So it improves the handling of the truck when we're axle up. Um, anytime you pick an axle up off the ground, you lose a little bit of roll stability. This is building that stability back into the system. Um, we run a heavy duty shock absorber in the front as well. Kind of helps the handling a little bit. Um, then we work our way back here. We get back to the adaptive loading. And this is the lift axle portion. It comes up off the ground when you're lightly loaded. Everything is automated. There's no driver interaction with this. Um, it senses weight. When you are heavy enough to set the axle down, this axle will always bias weight to the drive axle. And because we're a pusher configuration, this axle, when it biases weight, it loads the front axle and the back axle, the end points. So you have better steering traction in the wet or in the snow, and you have better uh, uh, drive axle traction as well. Um, this is a down sped powertrain. It is a uh, 247 uh, gear ratio in the, in the drive axle, and it's a 13 speed M drive heavy duty, which is a 0.78 overdrive, so 72 mile an hour is 1200 RPM. I also have the ability to run in direct drive at 55 mile an hour is 1150 RPM, which is kind of the magic spot for fuel economy in these trucks. So I call that the two speed cruise concept. I can run in either gear at highway speed. Uh, which is kind of unusual for, for trucks. Most trucks, you know, you're looking to get in the top gear and you stay in top gear. This gives me some flexibility and option that um, a lot of the downsped powertrains don't have today. So it pulls very good in the hills because I have that two-speed cruise concept working for me. I can simply drop a gear, catch some RPMs without losing any road speed. Um, I tend to like to downshift actually before I hit the hill instead of losing speed as I'm climbing the hill. Um, you can see we got dual tires on this instead of wide base singles. It's one of the things I think that's very important in adaptive loading or any six by two uh, setup. When you run a wide base tire, you give up 25% of the contact patch down here, um, which is a, a very hard thing to give up when you have all the torque and horsepower running through one drive axle. A lot of people talk about reducing rolling resistance um, in a six by two you're not necessarily wanting to reduce rolling resistance. You want to optimize the contact patch of the tire tread uh, to stop what we call running slip. Even a super low roll tire doesn't really improve fuel economy on the six by twos because you, you lose all of the rolling resistance advantage to running slip. And uh, so a moderate rolling resistance tire seems to do a better job and the duals seem to outperform the wide base singles in every category including fuel economy in a 6x2 setup which is um, kind of backwards of what everybody talks about. 6x4 uh, the wide base tires work but in a 6x2 we, we have much better luck with duals um, and you get a 12% increase in roll stability because you're a little bit wider here and um, it allows you to get the full capacity out of the axle. If you run an offset rim on the wide base, a lot of times you have to reduce the capacity of that axle so you don't screw up the bearing in the hub. And this allows me to get the full amount of lift logic and run axle up as much as I can under payload. We got some aerodynamics going on here. Um, and a lot of this, how effective it is, it depends on where you're at in the country. Um, when we get east of the Mississippi, I think the flow below and, and the wheel covers are, are more of a factor. You tend to high, uh, average higher speeds and you get a lot more broadside wind. Um, so this stuff really becomes a factor. Um, once you're west of the Mississippi, back east, um, it's more of a safety play where it knocks down road spray. Um, so you can see out of your mirrors better. You're not blind in oncoming traffic on wet roads. So that's what I really like about it when I'm back east. Um, 
Same type of thing with the wheel covers. It doesn't really knock down road spray, but what it does do is it protects the, the oil hubs from water intrusion. It just gives you an extra layer of protection there. They look kind of cool. I mean, it, they, they look good. Um, so at high speed, yeah, I think you probably pick up maybe two to three percent with the entire combination of the wheel covers and the flow below. Um, moderate speeds, we, we probably don't measure it, but like I said, it does knock down road spray, so that's, that's always a plus. Idle Free, that thing is awesome. Um, that is an electric air conditioner, an EAPU. Um, it has its own set of batteries over on the other side there, and it, uh, everything mounts to the back wall. There's nothing to take up driver storage space. That's one of the features that I really liked about it, that the driver wasn't losing any more storage space under the bunk. Some of the systems, they take up a lot of space under the bunk. So everything's on the back wall with this. It is a 10,000 BTU system, which a lot of the electrics are 7,500. So we've got a nice BTU increase. We also have a 350 cubic feet per minute air handler. Most are about 250 and there's no duct work to lose efficiency. It is direct exit right out of the air handler. So it does a very, very nice job of cooling this cab, even at a 100 degree day. Um, you know, we're Arctic white, so it reflects a lot of heat to begin with. I do have some air space between the top fairing and the cab, so that acts as an insulator as well. And um, it'll run 11 hours on a 100 degree day, and it, it, keeps it, it keeps it cold in there. So it, it does a very, very nice job, better than what I expected, to tell you the truth. It does a very nice job. It's quiet too, and not having to listen to a, a diesel APU putting back there all night, that's a, definitely a big bonus in, in, as far as I'm concerned. We do a lot of experimentation with different types of fuel treatments, catalysts, biodiesels. Um, I, really, just the old standby straight number two diesel is still our preference. We do treat to make sure cetane levels are where they should be. The recommendation for a Volvo Mac is 45. Most pump fuel is around 40, and a lot of times it degrades, so it's a little lower. So we do, we do treat cetane. Um, also, it helps keep the fuel filters clean. Um, a lot of times we do a 60,000 mile oil change, and we'll get fuel filters to last 60,000 miles if we treat religiously. Keeps the asphaltine from building up on the filter elements. Um, so we do that. Um, we're always willing to look at something though. I mean, I, I'm constantly testing something in regards to fuel and fuel quality and, and uh, always looking for that little, little advantage.